Hi, in today's video I want to introduce you to the user space IO subsystem of the Linux kernel and show you how to write the hello world user space IO driver for a PCI card. But first let's jump to the kernel's documentation and learn what user space IO or UIO is. So here we are at the kernel documentation. You can see this user space IO how to is from the year 2006, so also already quite old. And here we have a preface, which will explain to us what UIO is. So, for many types of devices, creating a Linux kernel driver is overkill. All that is really needed is some way to handle and interrupt and provide access to the memory space of the device. The logic of controlling the device does not necessarily have to be within the kernel, as the device does not need to take advantage of any of other resources that the kernel provides. One such common class of devices that are like this are for industrial I.O. cards. So what are industrial I.O. cards? Well, for example, if you have cards which give you some inputs outputs, you can plug in into your PC or maybe also some um, cards which gives you access to industrial bus systems like Profibus or ASI bus, for example. These are industrial I.O. cards and yeah. To address the situation, the user space I.O. system, UIO, was designed. For typical industrial I.O. cards, only a very small kernel module is needed. The main part of the driver will run in user space. This simplifies development and reduces the risk of serious bugs within a kernel module. And that's of course true, because in a user space program, you don't have so much opportunity to kill your system like you have in a kernel module. And down here we have a selection guide if our hardware is suitable for UIO. So hardware that is ideally suited for an UIO driver fulfills all of the following. The device has memory that can be mapped. The device can be controlled completely by writing to this memory. The device usually generates interrupts and the device does not fit into one of the standard kernel subsystems. And I have a device which fulfills at least two out of these three yeah, conditions, and this is this PCI card here. So let's meet the PCI TTL32 IO card. If yeah, you've watched some other videos here on my channel, you know I've already used this card for showing you how to write a PCI driver. And this device basically gives you access to 32 GPIO pins over PCI. So, does it fulfill the three conditions? Well, the first one, it can be controlled over memory, which can be mapped, is true. So here we can control this device completely by reading from one bar. Then the device usually generates interrupts, is also true. So we have the opportunity to use GPIO 1 to 16 to generate an interrupt, but the last one is not true, so for this particular card, the GPIO chip subsystem would be perfect for the Linux kernel, so you can access it with standard Linux GPIO setting mechanisms. But hey, for our use case, I think it's also okay to use a PCI driver or a UI, PCI UIO driver for this device. Okay, but there is one sad thing. So here I am at the Linux kernel source code, and you can see here there's a UIO PCI generic driver available. So for some PCI and PCI Express devices, you don't have to write your own UIO driver, but you can use this generic UIO driver instead. But there is a limitation which my device has. So this generic UIO driver won't bind to devices which do not support the interrupt disable bit in the command register. All devices compliant to PCI 2.3 and all compliant PCI Express devices should support this bit. So what's the interrupt disable bit? Well, it's part of the configuration space and here you can see this bit. So here over the command register we can enable the IO space, the memory space and the bus master of a PCI device and bit 10 here is the interrupt disable bit. So if we set this bit to 1, um, interrupt signal is disabled. Otherwise, assertion of the signal is enabled. 
So over this bit we can basically just disable the interrupts. And the problem is my specific card doesn't support this bit. Or, so when I scan my PCI bus, you can see this device here is my Qualcomm PCI TTL 32IO card. And if I use set PCI to read the command register from this device, you can see it's currently set to two, which means memory space access is enabled. And now if I try to set this bit to um, 402 hexadecimal, so I would set bit number 10. And if I read it back, you can see bit 10 is not set. So this device doesn't support it and therefore I can't use the um, generic PCI UIO driver for it. But that's not too bad because then I have to I have the opportunity to show you how to write a proper um, UIO driver for this device. And that's what I will do right now. And to speed everything a little bit up, I've already prepared a Hello World PCI driver, which we can use for yeah, for our UIO driver. So if I take a closer look here at this device, and if I want to print out the numbers, you can see this is the vendor ID and this is the device ID of this device here. And here I have created a folder I have called PCI TTL 32 IO under UIO. And in here I have the source file for a hello world PCI driver for this card and I have a make file to build it. So let's take a look at the driver itself and you can see it's just a hello world PCI driver. Here we have two defines for the device and vendor ID of our PCI card. Here we have our compatible struct. Here we have a probe function in which we are enabling the device and requesting the regions. And I have a remove function in which I will release the regions again and disable the device. Here I have my driver struct and here I'm registering the driver and that's basically all I have here. Okay, so now let's add um, some code to turn this into a UIO driver. So the first thing I need therefore is a new include. So I have to include Linux slash UIO under driver dot H. And then here in the probe function, I will need a new object from the type struct UIO info or a pointer to this object. And then one of the first things I'm doing here in the probe function is I'm allocating memory for this object. Therefore I'm using defmkzalloc and my device is my PC, um, the device from my PCI device. I want to allocate um, size of struct UIO info bytes and the flag here, the allocation flag is GFP kernel. Then of course I have to check if the memory allocation was successful and if not I will return error no memory. Okay, but if this worked, we can now set up the device. And for a hello world UIO device I have to fill two fields. The first field is a name and I will initialize it with PCI TTL 32 IO. And the second one is a version where I can place a version string and let's make this version 1.0 here. Okay, and then the next thing I have to do is I have to register the UIO device. Therefore, I will use the UIO register device function. So the first argument here is the pointer to the parent device of my UIO device, which is the device struct of my PCI device. And the second argument is the UIO info struct, which I'm passing in here. So on success, this should return zero, else I should get an error code. Mm -hmm. So 
So let me print out something to the kernel's log error registering UIO device and let's return or let's go to free region and then here I can uncomment this label and yeah here oh and one if I got one important thing so if this worked I want to set the set or PCI set driver data so I want to set the driver data of my PCI device and I want to set it to my info pointer here and then here in the remove function I have to unregister the UIO device so therefore let me copy this line here okay and info is PCI get driver data and then I can call the function UIO unregister device and in here I place in my pointer to my UIO info object and that should be it okay so now let me try to compile this okay I made an error here yes two times dot h is not a good idea okay let's try it again now it's working cool so let me open up a second window here where I want to follow the kernels lock and now let's insert our kernel module I okay okay we're getting a uh, um, warning unknown symbol UIO register device and this is because before loading the device I have to load the UIO driver because by default it's not loaded in the kernel so let's use sudo modprop UIO and then let's try to load this module again probing okay and it also gives us a, a message enabled at IROQ16 we will talk about this in a later video but what did we get here or from loading the device well first we have a new device file called uio0 and if i go to sys class uio in here i also have a folder for uio device 0 and if i take a look at it we have some um some files in here so the device here is a pointer to our pci device which looks good and we have a name and a version file here and if I cut the version we see it's version 1.0 and if I cut the name you see it's PCI TTL32 IO cool so this is a hello world device but currently we can't do much with it in my next videos I will show you how to access the memory space of my device and in the next in the second video I will also show you how to use this interrupt which is offered by the device but i guess that's for now i hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something if you want to support my work you can buy my coffee and buy my coffee.com slash for linux so thanks for watching and goodbye